Have you ever wondered about thunderstorms and where they get all the energy for those lightning strikes from cloud to cloud or from cloud to ground? Well, the answer may be just beneath your, your feet. Think about winter. The air is dry and you scruff your feet across the carpet and then you reach out to a metal doorknob and zap. Well, you've just made a mini lightning bolt. And what happens is that you created a static electricity charge. And when you got near the doorknob, it turned into current electricity and then leaped the gap. Well, static electricity is, is a very common thing. In fact, you can, you can demonstrate it in many ways. This is a classic demonstration here. All you need to do is have some scraps of paper. So I'm going to throw some colored tissue here. And then I've got my plastic pipe, and I'm going to rub it with a piece of wool fabric. And what's happening is that I'm stripping off electrons, part of the atom, stripping them off, and giving the rod a negative charge. And watch what happens when I get near those scraps of paper. And how they're jumping there to the rod. Eventually, some of them will fly off because they get, get totally charged, and then they fly away. Well, that's kind of a fun thing to do there with static electricity. You can do something the same with a comb that you're combing through your hair, and then it'll, it'll attract paper. Well, what's going on here? What's happening here? And to understand that, we really need to um, go into the basics of atomic structure and the atom. Now, here's a classic diagram of the atom. It is showing the nucleus and then this large number of electrons going around it. It happens to be the atom of copper. Now this, by the way, I should say to you is a, is a diagram of an atom, but it's not the way it really is. You might consider it like a graphic organizer because it makes it easy to understand the parts. We've got the nucleus with the, the protons, which I'm showing as red, and the neutrons as, as blue, and the electrons as yellow. But that's not how an atom really looks. Those electrons are going around so fast that it's actually more like this, like a, like a cloud or a shell of electrons. And the electrons are in all places at all time. So that's a much more accurate representation of, a, of an atom. But the other one's good for looking at structure and, and learning about the nature of particular atoms. Well, let's take the atom of uh, helium. It's got two protons, two neutrons, and there's two electrons going around it. Now, it turns out protons have an electrical charge. And by definition, we call that a positive charge. The electron has, by definition, a negative electric charge. And the neutron has no charge at all. So I show you this very simple atom right here. And uh, it's got two protons, two positive charges, two electrons, two negative charges. Well, they balance out, so it's a neutral atom. OK, let's go back to our copper here. Now, the copper has 29 protons and 29 electrons. And that's fine. It's neutral. But copper, like a number of materials, the outermost electrons, like this one way up in here, tend to be loosely attached. And they will occasionally wander from one atom to another. Well, here we got two copper atoms near each other. And this one now has two electrons, and that one is missing the electron here in the outer, outer area of the atom. So this one's got 29 protons and 30 electrons. Now here's, what, here's the good part about this. Now that it has 30 electrons, it has more negative charges than positive charges. So that gives the entire atom a negative charge. But this one right here, well, it's now short. So it has 29 protons and 28 electrons. Well, that means that it has more positive charges than negative charges. And that makes that a positively charged atom. Now, there's some rules about these charges, these electrical charges. And it's like, well, it's sort of like a magnet, actually. You know how the north pole of a magnet attracts the south pole of another magnet. But north poles and north poles repel. Well, it's like that with charges, too. Like charges repel, unlike charges attract. So these two electrons will push each other apart. These two protons will push each other apart. But the proton and electron are attracted to each other. Now, this will be a just a little diagram here showing how that might work. You get those two together like that. They, they have these charge or these force lines, you might say. And they attract each other. But if they're electrons, if you have like negative and negative, they, they push each other apart. So they repel. Now, how does that actually get involved with a thunderstorm and lightning? Well, this thing right here, this little machine right here, helps me to explain that. It's called a Van de Graaff generator. And it works very much like a thunderstorm to build up a, a big static electricity charge. Now, what it has is a, a metal dome here. And this plastic tube right here goes down to where the motor is located. And inside is a belt. So in our diagram, we can see it. There's the dome. And here's the belt right there. And uh, there's a, a line going to the ground. 
it's so here we go I'm going to if I were to turn this on the belt would begin to move and it would go around so go up around this pulley come down here like that and so on but as it does so what it does is it captures electrons brings them up kind of scrapes them off like we did with this cloth right here and takes them up to the top when they get up to the top the electrons immediately move to the outside and in doing so they build up this very strong charge so let's take a look at that here and I'm going to turn on the thing but I need one thing to have here and that's this discharge one because it produces a very strong electric charge here it's not dangerous but it does get rather irritating if it gets zapped well I can use this to discharge the sphere afterwards so here we go now we're building up an electric charge and it's moved all the electrons are moving to the outside of this of the dome and I'm beginning to feel my hair is kind of moving around like it's being affected by this. I'll bring my discharge wand nearby. There we go. You can see the sparks that are being generated by it. They're jumping pretty far. Well, this is about a 300,000 volt discharge here with this. Fortunately, it doesn't have much current, so it's not really dangerous. Okay, I'm going to turn this thing off. And I do so by touching the discharge wand, so it, all the electrons go through here back through the wire to the ground. Okay. Now I can do all kinds of fun things with this. And I'm sure that you've probably seen pictures of these machines with people putting their hand on the outside and then if they have long hair and the hair sticks out. Well, that's gotten pretty, pretty hard to do these days because all the hair things that we have, the, the lotions and the shampoos and the sprays and so forth, makes it hard for the hair to stand up. So instead, I decided to make a wig here out of yarn. And I need a little piece of tape here to hold this uh, wig on here. So here we go. I'm going to put it right on the top there and spread the yarn pieces out around it here. And watch what happens when we turn it on. Well, the charges move to the yarn and the charges will go out to try to get away from each other as much as possible. Remember about the like charges repel? Well, those are all negatively charged and those pieces of yarn are trying to get as far away from each other as they can. Now, when I bring the discharge wall nearby, look what happens. They try to discharge themselves, but then they get a new charge right afterwards. And I've discharged it. Well, that's one thing you can do, but there are a lot of other fun things you can do with this. And I'll do one more here. Take a plastic plate and put it on the top of the sphere. Do that. And then I'm going to take some Rice Krispies and sprinkle them on the top there. Nice batch of these things here. Now the charge is going to get up there into the Rice Krispies and see if you can guess what's going to happen. Here we go. <laughs> well, those uh, Rice Krispie pieces there all become negatively charged and they try to get as far away from each other as they can and they make a rather big mess here in the process. Okay. All right, well, let's continue right here and explain how this relates to lightning. So we get our, our charge there, and there's our discharge wand. And uh, when you get enough of a charge around the outside of the sphere and you got this, this ground line, which is the discharge wand and that wire going to the ground, well, you get a lightning strike. Now, how does that work in clouds? Well, it's a little, little bit different in the arrangement, but basically in clouds, what we have are tremendous currents of air flowing. This, these are the the thunder clouds known as cumulonimbus and there's warm moist air is rising and there's cold air falling and you know how that is when you're near a thunderstorm how the air starts to blow around and it gets kind of cool or warm same things happening here but we've got these circulation patterns that are developed sort of like the belt inside the Van de Graaff generator well charges are carried you get the top of the cloud that is positively charged this part of the cloud will be negatively charged and then because this is near the ground it drives away any el electrons through here so it becomes mostly positively charged down here and then what happens is it, when the charges become great enough the lightning strikes or it strikes to the ground right there now how does that look well here let's take a diagram here we've got updrafts and downdrafts so the updrafts and downdrafts now the downdrafts will be heavy raindrops and hailstones and they'll be falling because the, the air currents are not strong enough to hold them anymore they get so big they start to fall. The ice crystals, though, and mist will be carried upward by those warm updrafts. So there's a lot of uh, mixing of these particles as they go up and they go down. 
and it might look something like this, but that's not exactly how it is. Let me show you through this way. Let's say we have uh, just one of each, one going up and one going down. As they get near each other, they transfer charges, like we did with the Van de Graaff. So as a result, you get these charges in the cloud, and the lightning eventually will strike because the charges are so great and the force is so great, the lightning will strike and the charges will balance these other out and then they'll build up again and, and so on and so forth. So whenever you see a thunderstorm out there and you see that lightning, what you're seeing is something very similar to when you walk across your floor and scruff your feet. It's the development of static electricity and when the energy gets great enough, well then it becomes current electricity.